Yo, in this tutorial, we're gonna be making a shopping list in Python, completely beginner's guide, without having to download anything. So let's do it. So now it's time to create the list. Before we start to type code in, there's one thing I do want you to understand. There are companies out there that are kind of in a tough spot because their software cannot be updated. Therefore, the company or the developers that made that software did not think ahead in the future. They didn't make it, I guess, expandable, expandable, and they didn't make it upgradable. So we got to think here, when we made this, when we're making this list, we're going to make it so that later on, if we wanted to save the list, we can. If we wanted to use multiple different lists inside this one program, we can. We're going to need to be able to clear the console each time we need to display new information. In order to do that, we need to import the OS. Let's go ahead and do so. So now we've import OS, let's go ahead and create ourselves our first shopping list. We're going to just give it the name maybe shopping list and then we'll make it a blank or empty list. Now there it is on line 3, we've made a blank empty list. Let's go ahead and create our first function now that will clear the console whenever we need to. And we just have to call that function. If you remember how to create a function, go ahead and create it before I show you. So to create a function, it was simply using the keyword DEF define your function I name mine clear underscore console and then in here I'm gonna use the OS that I've imported to say OS dot system dot or sorry open and close parentheses and then all you have to do is put the word clear in there and that will clear the console each time we need a console cleared in our app we need to be able to show a menu that the person can type certain things and it displays certain different things and then also they can type uh, an object or a fruit whatever it is and add that to the list at least that's how I have it in my mind so I'm gonna make my first function which is basically going to be the menu that's going to be displayed this function here is my menu function I call it show menu first thing I've done is clear the console call the function to clear the console next the print what would you like to do and then this is another way to print when you need to do like multiple lines all you have to do to accomplish this is I'll erase it for you. Then your columns, your double columns, then go to the end of the double column right there and press double column again. You see a set of three pops up and get, at that point you can press enter and create space between them. At this point I simply wrote all my lines that I want to be printed and I'm good to go. Let me call this function for you so you can see how it looks. Show menu open and close parentheses and let's run it there looks pretty good let's continue making these functions we're gonna keep them independent and then we're gonna put them all together with a common code I'm gonna remove this this was only for testing and I'm gonna write my show list function now this will show all the items in the list what's going on here first I'm clearing the console again as usual then I'm using the len command Len command is a command that's written like so. And whatever you put inside, it will give you the length of that object, like how many elements is in that object. If you put a word, it will give you the length per the characters. If you put a list, which is what I have done, it gives me the length of how many things are in the list. So I simply use an if condition to check whether that length is zero. And if it is, we're gonna tell them that they have nothing in their list. Otherwise, else, we're gonna tell them, hey, this is the items in the list, and then using a loop to loop through the list and representing every element inside the list, printing it each time we loop. Let's check to see if it worked. All I'm gonna do is add something to my shopping list using the append command, and I'm gonna add a shoe. I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna add 
two more shoe, shoe two and shoe three, and then I'm going to call the show list. And then as you can see, I've put a parameter. So I can send it a list and it shows me what's in that list. I'm thinking ahead. Why did I do that though? Because imagine I have a grocery list and a clothing list. I can just send each list anytime I want and get the amount of items in that particular list. So it's not hard coded to just one list. All I have to do now is send the list that I want it to give me the items that are in that list, which is shopping list. The empty one here that I'm adding stuff to and then calling the show list. Let's see it. It shows me that there's shoe, shoe two, and shoe three. Excellent. That works. Let's get rid of this code because this was only for testing. Let's move on to our other functions. Now a function to remove. Hmm. Interesting. Let's make this a little bigger. A function to remove from the list. I've called it remove underscore from underscore list. Again, a parameter. That way we can just tell it which list we wanted to do this thing with. So first I start by clearing the console. And then I'm asking them, what would you like to remove? With the input command, I've asked them now to simply type whatever they want to remove. Whatever they type gets put into the variable word. I'm checking to see if word is in that list that I've sent them to remove from. And if it is, then I'll go ahead and use the remove command, which is a part of every list, remove, append, and so on. Okay, to remove whatever it is that we just typed. And then if it was successful, the other line below would read, I would clear the console again and just let them know that that item that they have asked to be removed has been removed from the list. Now, if you don't understand this command here, it's simply just printing a string, putting the open and closed curly bracers, which becomes a placeholder. Then at the end of it, you simply say format, and then you give it the variable that will be replaced by the placeholder. So whatever they type, like Chewbacca, and if Chewbacca is in the list, it will say Chewbacca has been removed from the list. Easy enough. I'm simply letting them know here by clearing the console and letting them know that they are a buffoon and the word that they type is not in the list. All right, so we're almost there. We have the help menu, which is this. We have the show list, which is the show. And then when they type remove, we have the remove from list. Now when they type clear, we want to be able to clear the list completely. So again, here's the function to clear the list. But again, we're asking them to send us again. We want to keep this independent. So send us again what list, when you call a function to clear, tell us which list you want to clear. Upon that function being called, we simply clear the console. Then we use the clear command, just like append or remove. Those are all parts of the list command. We use the clear command to clear everything that's in that list. And then we print list is clear. So I think all of our functions are in place. We are ready now for the final step that kind of bring all these functions together. Let's do it. Now, just real quick, the way that I did this, um, yeah, I don't know if you see the structure, is building these independent functionalities and then using another piece of code that pulls them in and make them work. That is a, a beautiful, wonderful way to code your apps and your games. That way, when something breaks, if a function breaks, it breaks independently. You can go and fix it, update it independently, and it just works along with everything else. Okay, so everything, nothing is really tied to the other thing. They're all independent functions that we've made so far. Okay, now we're gonna tie them together. First thing when the app starts, you can see if I run it here, nothing will happen because I don't have any actual code that's gonna run right away. I've only made functions and an empty list. So first thing I wanna do, is show the menu. So I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do first is call that function. The first thing is we're simply just gonna call the function, that's that. It's simply call the function. Next, we're gonna hop into a while loop. So we're gonna say while and then true. While true simply means this while is true. So this while loop is eternal. It will run until we tell it not to. This is me asking the user to add an item or type a command 
to do something else all the other cool functions that we've made so type a command to do any of these or just type an item and add it to the list so um the item that they type or whatever they type we're just going to capture it on the variable again call word equals and then we'll say input which allows them to do an input and in the input i'll simply say add an item do a colon and a space basically if we run this it says what would you like to do here's the commands that you can do but then also it's just asking you to add, to add an item so i can type any of these commands or i can type an item i want to add so if if i type apple press enter you know it's a loop so i can type whatever i want and it's just going to keep asking me to type over and over again it's time for some conditions guys if the word that we type is equal to let's say quit all right this doesn't have a function you can see we didn't make a function but if they do type quit instead of adding an item then what we simply want to do here is break out of the loop and that will stop the app we we'll also want to say goodbye before we do so let's just say goodbye thank you or we just say goodbye that's it then that will break us out of the loop let's create a few more conditions watch your indentations we'll say if this time I'll make a space between it <laughs> we're gonna do an L an else if this time we'll say else if we want to do an else if because we want all this conditions to be linked together and then at the end we have the default else which is like what happens if none of these other ifs um, are true so you can't say if and then if and then if and then else because the else will only be with the if above it and not the other if so to link them together we have to say if l if l if l if then else so another l if is the other optional condition is if the word is equal to uh let's say say help or you know we should do it we should do it in the order it was i'll put the quit at the front but then we'll start off with help if it was help, then what we want to be doing is calling the function to show the menu. So, boom, show menu. And we're going to continue with that. Again, watch your indentation. All right? We're simply going to say L if one more time. If the word this time is equal to, what's the other command? Show. Right, so if it's equal to show, then we want to show the list, show list, All right? But again, we have to send the list. So we'll send um, shopping list, underscore list, it's like so. What other command we have remove, all right? You can see, you can see the, uh, the pattern here. Clear and clear is the last one. Clear. If our word is equal to clear, then that is the one that we use to clear the list. So we'll clear the list, and then of course we have to send the list that we want to clear. Just like that. Uh, let me see. If, did I get everything? Remove, mm, clear. Okay. And now. The final part, which is just else, All right? So if we didn't type quit, we didn't type help, we didn't type show, remove, or clear, then whatever that we typed is simply to add an item. And then that's what we want to do here. Let's add an item to the list simply by saying shopping list dot append. And then whatever that word is that we type. And then what we could do is maybe print something that says, hey, we've added something to the list or whatever the case is. I think it's pretty good. Let's test it out. All right. So I've just added to the list. Um, let me type something else like shoe. Um, I'm going to type a tie. 
Oops. And if I type show, it shows that I have an apple shoe and tie added to the list. Now it's asking me to add more stuff to the list. What if I type clear? List is clear. What if I type show? Zero items in the list. And if I type uh, help, I get to see the full menu again and I can go from there. So this is actually working pretty well. But here's, here is one way that you can improve this. If I type help like so, it's going to add the word help to my list. So if I type show like so, it adds the word show to my list. It's like it's mandatory that I type it in all caps. See? So that doesn't really look really well. So let's fix that. What we'll do is in the if condition here, we'll fix in the while loop here, we'll fix what we've typed before we do the if condition stuff. So what we'll do is since we're checking to see if the word we type is a quit, help, and these other words in all uppercase, all we have to do is convert whatever we typed into full uppercase and then compare it before we compare it. So let's do that. So whatever we type, which is word, is equal to the word that we type, but dot upper, open and close parenthesis which means every text of it, this means every character that we've typed in Word is now gonna be the uppercase version. So now it doesn't matter if we type it weird. So let's go run this one more time. And if I type um, shoe, that gets added to the list. And if I type show with a capital S and then everything else, lowercase, it still works. It still shows me the list. If I type menu, not menu, uh, help that still works and that was all lowercase so now we've fixed that now our list is complete guys that is it hopefully that made sense to you again appreciate you and you have a wonderful wonderful day